Hello everyone, it's Justin here again. Thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel and watching this vlog video covering the 2016 Four Continents Figure Skating Championships. I think many other figure skating fans are with me when I say that this championship came at a very good time because it's been about three weeks since the U.S. National Championships and still about a month and a half before the World Figure Skating Championships in Boston. So it's a really exciting time. Now, before I start talking about uh, the competitors, I first wanted to give two shout outs to my Twitter followers. The first one goes to Brittany with the Twitter handle at figureskates88 and also Jonathan Bickford with the Twitter handle Jonathan O'Hay. Those are very two awesome people who love figure skating and are just um, very funny. Everyone should give them a follow if you can. Okay, so let's start off with my favorite discipline, as everyone knows, the ladies. Congratulations to Satoko Miyahara from Japan for winning the Four Continents Championships this year. She for sure deserved the win, and it probably felt really good after placing second last year to Pauline Edmonds due to a lot of the technical errors Satoko had in her free program then. This year was totally not the case at all. She was technically flawless, or at least very close to being so. There were no under rotations, no edge calls on her jumps. Now, let's start with the short program. She executed a perfectly clean triple lutz, triple toe combination, very quick rotation um, in the air. And I actually thought that the landing of the triple toe was clearly around. And so that was nice to see uh, Satoko being rewarded for the rotation there because she's had the reputation of kind of um, being close on the calls because her jumps are not big, they're kind of tiny, and she hasn't always benefited from the benefit of the doubt from the technical caller who um, can call a jump under rotated or clean. So that was really good to see that she's kind of earning the respect of the judges by skating perfectly clean here. Her short program, I love the kind of sultry music and the choreography like suits her really well. You see a more like feisty side of Satoko, which is nice. The one criticism I have of that short program, and don't get me wrong, I do love it, but I think she could sell it a little more towards the end when the music becomes upbeat. But otherwise, she's got everything going on, including the spins. Sometimes I forget that she's such a great spinner because I focus on her, her fast rotation in the jumps. But kudos to her. And in the free program, um, she just delivered. I mean, that's what a champion has to do. Deliver in the short, deliver in the long, don't let anything else get in the way. And landed all her jumps. No triple-triple in the free program, though. However, she does do two double-axle triple-toe combinations, both in the second half of the program, earning a 10% bonus. So kudos to her. That is um, good, good of her for being able to accomplish all of that and I just wish her packaging was a little bit more adult and this is actually one of the first times that I've seen her where she looks like a full senior lady tiny frame but senior skater I think in the past I've said that she looks like a junior skater but still you know a strong junior skater but no she actually looks like a senior lady I, I can't wait for next season where hopefully she's packaged more like a woman on the ice and I think that'd be great to see and I think the timing would be perfect as well one thing to note about Sotoko in this competition is that her program component marks the second mark the artistic marks um were actually pretty good in the free program she was granted um a lot of eights so they were in the the mid eights which is very good for Sotoko but in the short program they were in the high sevens to low eights I think the one mark that was given in the high sevens was in transitions so that's something she could work on but no the free program satoko knew how to deliver and it's awesome to see her stand on top of that podium now moving on to the silver medal winner here is Mariah Nagasu from Team USA, sentimental favorite of many figure skating fans. Uh, moving up from third place after the short program, this was a big, big win for Mariah Nagasu. Huge. Being like the third tier like American female skater here and finishing the highest out of all the American ladies, nonetheless second in the whole competition, is ginormous for Mariah. Her confidence should be boosting up from here on out. Now let's talk about the program. 
it was really telling that she was going to do so well from that short program. It's one of my favorites, the Imagine Dragons Demon song. So good. Her triple flip, triple toe was bam, spot on. You could tell there was no under rotation. She had to fight for the triple loop a little bit, but the judges did not ding her so much on the grade of execution for that element. Spins were great. And the long program, for the long program, it was great to see her go out, do her job, be consistent. And I actually will say, I personally think that's one of the best long programs that Mirai has done in a long while. You could tell she's into the choreography. She likes the music. She's being more playful. She has more spark. And the skating skills are there. They still have room to grow, because if you want to compare her program component marks to Satoko's, uh, Mirai ranges in the mid-7s as opposed to the mid-8s. But that's something that can grow, especially um, when she builds her reputation with the judges. She's going to start getting the benefit of the doubt when it comes to um, the technical caller calling her jumps clean when it's close. And all of her jumps looked clean here. I was very impressed in the, the long program that she landed the triple flip, triple toe. Um, also, the double axle, triple toe, double toe was amazing. So really good for her. The only technical error I can spot on the protocols is an edge call on the flip. That's something so minute compared to everything she's been through. This was a great, great performance for Mariah. I, I kind of want to see her do those programs at Worlds in Boston. So the I know the likelihood of that happening is very slim, but just good job. I just want to sit here and say good job to her like a million times. She deserves to... I don't know, go on a nice vacation, eat as much food as she wants. But yeah, I think um, for next season, I think the appropriate step for her is maybe to get um, programs and work with top level choreographers because she can grow on the artistic side with choreography and some skating skills. She does have transitions, but I think she could have harder transitions and a couple more of them, especially in that long program. But like I said, let's just take away from this that Mariah Degasu is awesome because she won the silver medal here. Now let's move on to the third place finisher, also from Japan, um, is uh, Rika Hongo. Rika Hongo, this was an interesting competition for her. So she won the bronze medal. She was not third in either the short or the long. I believe she was fourth after the short and fifth after the long program. But because of the movements of other girls ahead of her in the short, moving downwards in the standings after the free program, it moved her up overall. So let's talk about her performances. Short program was not... On, she received a downgrade on her uh, triple toe at the triple-triple combination. That's really not good because when you get a downgrade, the base value points go from a triple to a double plus negative grades of execution. So that really hurt her. And then in the long program to the river dance, she also had problems with that opening combination as well. Now, it's not just technical for Rika. The other part about her skating that's not really growing on me and other people is that her artistry hasn't really grown that much. She still has an issue with her posture. She still looks a little gangly, and sometimes it can work with the choreography of her programs. I think it works better with the river dance, not so much with her short program, and it's kind of distracting because you see it all the time. It's not something that fades in and out of the program posture, you know, her strokings are not smooth. Sure, she can land difficult jumps, but when the jumps go, as they did this weekend, her programs kind of fall flat. So I think she was kind of lucky to uh, win the bronze medal here, but she was consistent enough, don't want to discredit her work. You know, she landed the triples she needed to do to, um, to uh, rise in the standings based on how other skaters performed. So Rika Hongo, She's going to world. She was named to the um, Japanese world team despite finishing fourth at Japanese nationals. But it'll be interesting to see where she places. I don't expect her to be in the top six in Boston based on how her season has gone so far. I do hope she takes some time this summer when the season's over to kind of recoup and work on technique. Maybe focus a little bit more on skating skills and um, 
extending her line and improving her posture, I think that could really improve her, um, her second mark. That's Rika Hongo. Now let's talk about the fourth place finisher here. Sorry, I just forget, so I'm going to look at my phone. I believe it was uh, So Yoon Park and from Korea. Now, like Rika Hongo, Hongo So Yoon Park also finished fourth here based on um, an interesting scenario with placements. I believe she was fifth after the short program and maybe like seventh in the long. You all can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so that's an interesting turn of events. However, when you watch her programs, she actually skated really well. Uh, she's a very lovely skater, um, more lyrical than I would expect her to be. Uh, let's start with her short program which I thought was pretty solid for her. She's um, had troubles with jumps before. Not this weekend, no under rotations. Triple Lutz, triple Salcal, triple toe, double axle. It was all good. What holds her down is that second mark, the program component marks. And I think it comes down to the fact that she needs to be a little bit more expressive on the ice, um, need to take a little bit more command of her moves. It's almost like her movements are too soft, um, increasing the speed of how she skates, I think, will go a long ways um, in the future. That being said, I also think that what's going to help her with that second mark is building reputation. She has not been the most consistent skater in the past, and so the judges are going to be a little conservative with rewarding extra marks. But if she continues to show that she can be clean and she makes the improvements that I just talked about, I think she could rise in the standings. Most definitely. And it would be great to see um, some more great skaters emerge out of Korea. And her long program, yeah, same thing. Maybe what could improve her in the standings in the future is the construction of her programs as well. I know in the short program, her triple-triple, the triple sock out, triple toe, those are the two easiest triple jumps and they're worth the fewest amount of points, especially compared to the other girls. And her triple lets. Both the combination of triplets are done before the halfway mark, so she doesn't get the bonus. Maybe she can move one of them to the bonus to get some more uh, points there. Also, there was a lack of a triple-triple combination in the free program. However, there were two double-axle triple-toe combinations, one being in the bonus and one being towards the beginning. So maybe she could um, really sit down and evaluate how her programs can work as well as making artistic changes in her skating next season, she could be a threat for the podiums on the Grand Prix events. I definitely believe so. Now let's finish off with the fifth place finisher here, USA skater Gracie Gold. And I'm, I'm almost at a loss of words right now. <sighs> so I believe she finished ninth after the short program, rallied back, she was third in the free program segment to lift her up to fifth. Unfortunately, that's still a disappointment in my mind. She really could have won. Probably should not have placed any lower than second. Coming in as the national champion and with her ability to skate so well technically, it was kind of frustrating to see. It was all mental issues. I was talking to some friends and what I'm noticing is that, so she's known for being inconsistent. Great skate, bad skate, great skate, bad skate. The inconsistent skates, I feel, are getting worse and worse. She fell twice in that short program. Did not even get a chance to attempt a combination, which is a big point loss. Um, and it's unfortunate because the judges are still rewarding her with high PCS scores, even though she doesn't necessarily deserve them. And don't get me wrong, I actually like Gracie Gold, especially when she puts it together. But she doesn't deserve those marks when she makes mistakes. But knowing that, if she skates clean, the judges are going to give it to her. Um, so I don't know what else to say. The long program, yes, she was able to bounce back. I don't think it was a strong enough bounce back, in my opinion. Did not complete the triple lutz, triple toe in the beginning. Still had some minor um, issues on the jumps later on as well. So she missed out on points. And if she was going to really rally to try to be back on the podium, she needed every point she could get. And she did not deliver that free program that she had at U.S. Nationals, which is kind of what she needed after that short program. And 
it's kind of disheartening too because she was also close to being on the podium. So even though she was fifth place, I think she was less than four points out of the podium placement. And she probably would have been granted even higher program component marks than Rika Hongo, who actually ended up winning the bronze medal. So it's unfortunate. I have no idea what to expect from Gracie Gold uh, coming into Worlds in Boston. I almost don't want to make any predictions, but don't worry. I will make a predictions video, even though I'm always wrong with them. I'm not sure. I could see it going either way. I could see her tanking and I could see her blowing it out of the park. We'll have to see. Um, on a side note, uh, my girl Ashley Wagner's probably heard of the results. And I actually think that it's good that Gracie Gold faltered here so that Ashley Wagner can view how she did and say, that can't be me again at the short program at Boston. I think that's going to be helpful for Ashley in the long run. So yeah. Okay, so now we're done with the ladies. Let's move on to the Paris competition. And I first have to start by saying um, that it sucked to see Megan Duhamel and Eric Radford from Canada withdraw um, due to um, an illness from Megan, but it sounds like it was the right thing to do. We wish you all a speedy recovery. And I was sad not to see them compete their long program that I love seeing so much. Um, it was pretty clear that they were sick because um, coming off of the short program, Megan just did not look like herself at all. So rest up well, and we'll see you back even stronger at Worlds. Now moving on with the competition, the gold medal finishers here are my favorite pairs teams internationally. The Chinese team, um, Min Ling Sui and uh, Kong Han, so good stole this competition especially with that show program i'd like to say they were nearly flawless it was so good technically on point the one thing i say want to say about them is that they are so special the chinese teams are known for being very legendary and there's a history of strong skaters competing in pairs in china and it must be hard for the new and upcoming chinese pairs to live up to them but sui and han not only live up to them technically they're also unique in a way and i can't put my finger on it maybe it's the fact that they're so much shorter but i also think that they're more fierce they give the best expression they're probably the most edgy artistically of the chinese skating teams and i love them so much i love watching them skate they are they i think they were in a class all on their own the way they stroke the way they skate um, two as one on the ice. They really pay attention to all the choreography, like every minute detail in that choreography of both their programs is paid attention to by them. And it's so good. And it shows because they receive really high com program component marks. I'd say the showstopper were high moments in the long program. They did a quad twist and then a quad sow cow that throw quad sow cow looked amazing the landing was spot on wow and i just think they skated so well to the samson and delilah they did have one notable error and that was um a sway falling on the side by side sow cow so not only was it a fall it also received an under rotation however if you look at the overall standings they won by so many points that that did not matter there's still room for them to grow um, in terms of points. So I think they are a true contender for that world title in Boston this season. I would be, I'd be willing to bet money on that. Maybe, maybe not winning because that's, that's a big risk for me. Um, for sure they should be on the podium and I think they're probably one of the best contenders for, um, the Russians, uh, this year. But yeah, I just love the programs. They are pushing the envelope artistically and, and technically, and I think that's what you kind of got to do with the sport. They're kind of like the Yuzuru Hanyu of Paris skating. I don't know what else to say about them. Do you all like them as much as I do? Hmm. Okay, so moving on to another pair team that I love. My favorite American team, Alexa Skimeka and Chris Kinnearum from the USA, had their moment at this competition with that free program. That was the free program of the year for them. I've been waiting forever to see them skate that long program as clean as they did. I think if you look at the protocols, all positive grades of execution marks rewarded to them. And it started off 
ooh, excuse me, with a clean throw quad twist. The throw quad twist, that doesn't make sense. A clean quad twist, because they have been struggling with that element the past few competitions, where it used to be so simple for them last season, at the end of last season. So it's good to see them get that back. Level four, man, that was rewarded by the judges. It was so good. And then they landed their side-by-side -side triple sow cows. I think they hung on to them. And then the most important thing to note about their long program is that they completed their um, their triple toe combination successfully. They did a triple toe, double toe. Chris had to put his um, free foot down on the landing, but hey, that's better than falling or popping or forgetting it, period. So congratulations to them. Their short program to Metallica, which is one of my favorites, was kind of spotty. They had some struggles, you know, um, the twist, and then on the um, the throw jump, uh, Alexa had to put her foot down, or not on the twist, the side-by-side, uh, -side, Chris um, held on to the landing, but they were given negative grades of execution marks on that. But the fact that they made some technical errors and they were still rewarded a score of 67 in third place, that's really good. They're building their reputation with the judges, and their program component marks are like holding up. The long program, they were really rewarded with their program component marks. Everything uh, rewarded in the mid eights. So that was really good to see. If they keep this up, they're going to move up in the world standings for sure. Probably not world medal contenders anytime soon, but getting closer and closer. I think it even it would even be an, an accomplishment for them to skate in the the last group at a world championships. That's definitely possible with how they're going and it's interesting they needed to have that perfect free program skate that they had here at nationals which they didn't so it was almost like it flipped a little bit um they need to have this exactly this with a perfect short program at boston i mean there's just very little room to for errors i think chris can gain confidence on his side-by-side -side jumps i really want to reward him for sticking out the landings of the solo jumps here this weekend in Taiwan. So hopefully this gives him confidence to go back and train for Boston. Very good. Now let's talk about the third place finishers here. I'm going to butcher the name, so I'm going to have to look it up. But it is the, the uh, Chinese pair, uh, the second Chinese pair that um, won the bronze medal. And they are, I just want to get this name right, Xiao Yu and Yang Jin. Now, I like this pair. They were in short, uh, short. They were in fourth place after the short program, obviously with uh, Chris and Megan competing that segment as well. So, out of metal contention there, and there's a reason why they had some technical errors in both the short and the long program. I do like how they look on the ice, and I think they're a good pair for each other. They kind of emote at the same level, and... I think the height difference is perfect, if that makes sense. But a very pleasant team to watch. They do suffer from technical errors, you know, had a fall in the free program as well. So they just have to work on consistency. And their program component marks actually could be better as well for a Chinese pair team. The one thing I want to note is that in the short program, their program component score was about one point ahead of Alexa and Chris's, and both having errors. And then in the free program, theirs actually ended up being about three points less than Alexa and Chris's. So I think skating clean and having a confident skate can, uh, can make that second mark go up. Also, I do think they should skate to more exciting material. You know, they are beautiful skaters. The music choices are actually good but i think it may benefit them to give it a little more and i think music choice would help that a lot now moving on to the next pair team who finish in fourth place another team from team usa is uh tara kane and daniel o'shea sorry for tara and I'll, she made an announcement on twitter that she was not feeling well and you could also see that as as well by looking at her face at the end of both program performances. Short program, there was a fall as well as the long program. So that was unfortunate for them to not be able to um, 
to continue the ride of being national champions. Um, the skates they had at nationals, both very great in the short and long, were not the same performances they gave here at Four Continents. And that's unfortunate. It would have been nice to continue giving that level of performance. But obviously she was sick, so hopefully she can rest up, get better for Worlds. But it was nice that they were able to um, move up in the standings after the short program because they were behind Marissa Castelli and Mervyn Tran, also from USA, and um, ended up being fourth right off the podium. So I think that's a good accomplishment for them. Uh, things to work on is just feel better and um, try to get that excitement back in your skating. Their program component marks internationally are still quite below Alexa and Chris's. They get solid mid sevens as opposed to Alexa and Chris who got mid eights in the long program. So in order to get that up, they'll have to be consistent with the jumps landed and also um, perform to the best of their ability. And I think probably next season will be the most uh, telling for how they do as national champions. Okay, so I just finished ladies and pairs. I will discuss dance for a little bit. Now, this will probably be the shortest segment of this video because you all know I'm not knowledgeable with dance. So I'm not going to get into the technical stuff. I, I did want to talk about my reactions. So congratulations to Maya and Alex Chiputani for winning the gold medal here. This was such a great achievement, maybe even a little better than their achievement at nationals just because this win was rewarded by an international panel of judges. Uh, many of you all were curious, just as I was, on how the judges would react to them being national champions and international competition. But it almost looks like the tides are changing. So I know a lot of ice dance is political, so maybe the ships have worked hard enough, long enough, now it's now paying off that they're always going to be above uh, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. Who knows? I I thought that was a, it was a little surprising after the short dance that they were in first place. I knew that they would uh, score really well from that free dance that everyone likes from Coldplay. But it was, it was interesting. Good for them. That free dance is so good. I will say it did not have the same spark emotional spark as it did as at the U.S. Nationals. But that makes sense. I think they're waiting to have that big moment in Boston with the full arena. That's going to create such a good moment in history. I can't, I can't wait for that moment. It's going to be great. Uh, second place finishers here, also from USA, uh, former U.S. Ice Dance leading team, uh, Madison Chalk and Evan Bates. Um, yeah, finishing after the Shibutani, so what do you all think? Hmm. I don't want to comment too much because I actually like them. I like I actually like all American dance teams for what, what I've seen. I don't have the history of following each team, though. Um, I was surprised to see the Canadian team win the bronze medal here, um, Weaver and Poje, because they, I think they are... They are a nice team to watch, but it was interesting. Um, what do you all think of the standings? Help me out here because I'm at a loss for words. But the biggest takeaway I have is how much respect the Shibutanis are getting now. And hopefully that respect continues on to Worlds. My question is, are Madison Chalk and Evan Bates always going to be close behind? Or are they going to start dropping in standings internationally? We will have to see. Um, also, uh, fourth place finishers, congratulations to Maddie and Zach from the U.S. They also had a pretty good moment here. So, very deep field in ice dance. Oh, and speaking of ice dance, I can't believe I almost forgot to say this. Uh, Tessa and Scott from Canada are making a grand comeback. I think that announcement came about half an hour ago. So that should shake things up. Are they going to be better than Andrew and Caitlin? at Canadian Nationals, and how will they compare to the other teams internationally? It's going to be an interesting year to follow. It sounds like they're making that comeback for this upcoming fall, so the 2016-2017 season. So it would be interesting to, to kind of keep them in mind when watching the top Ice Dance team at Worlds. But it's going to make the sport more exciting. So I'm going to take a break now because the men's have not competed and then I'll continue this video um, once uh, we know the results for the men's segment. 
Okay, so the men have finally skated their long programs, and I'm here to finish up this segment of my vlog video. I actually stayed up watching a lot of the earlier groups um, last night on Ice Network, and I fell asleep right before Boy Jin and Patrick Chan took the ice. I fell asleep with the lights on, my contacts in, hence why I'm wearing glasses this morning. But uh, it was really exciting this morning to catch up on Patrick Chan's long program. And now let's get right into that. Patrick Chan taking the title here, bouncing back from fifth after the short program. Such an amazing performance, technically and artistically perfect in my mind. It was so good. Two quad toes, two triple axles, perfect landings on everything. Gosh, he is such an artist on the ice. Like the way he glides, all of his movements, you know, the choreography in between the jumping elements and the spins. It's just top quality. This was the Patrick Chan long program skate we've all been waiting for on the international scene. It was so good. I am speechless. Such musicality and technically difficult. You know, I didn't think he would land the two quad toes in one program, especially with two triple axles as well. So it's very good for him. Let's talk about his short program. So he was fifth after the short because he had some mistakes on the landings of two of his jumping passes, you know, the quad toe and also the triple axle. When you're up against a strong field of men who can land um, these difficult jumps cleanly, you have to be on. And Patrick Chan, he was able to bounce back to win the title here, but I'm not sure that he would be able to do the same thing at the World Figure Skating Championships, where there would be a Yuzuru Hanyu and a Javier Fernandez. He, Patrick Chan has to be on in both the short and the long, I believe, to be able to take the title in Boston. So hopefully... He has good enough momentum from this long program to really believe in himself to skate a clean short. But gosh, it was just so good. I don't even know what else to say. It's, he has such control over his blade. It's ridiculous. Rewarded with super high program component marks. And just to put his program component marks into perspective with the other competitors. So for the long program, Patrick received, I believe it was a 97. Boyang Jin had an 80 for that PCS for the long program. So there's such a big gap in between those two artistically. And you can see it on the protocols, the score sheets, and you can see it while watching them on the ice. It's just that evident. So now let's move on to Boyang Jin of China, the guy who can land so many quads. Now he was actually first after the short program and sliding down to second uh, overall after the free program. But what a nice outing for him here, landing all of those quads, short program. Very impressive. Quad Lutz, and another quad, and triple axle. Same with the long program. You know, he had, I will say in the long program, he lands his jumps, all the difficult ones. He has better landings of them in the beginning of the program rather than the end. They start to get a little sloppy. Maybe that's... Um, an effect of conditioning. Maybe that's something he needs to work on in the future, but what he really needs to work on, and I think this takes time, time and a lot of effort, is his artistry. Now, I remember seeing him earlier this season. I did not think he was artistic whatsoever. Still don't see him as an artist at all. However, I do find him more enjoyable to watch at the Four Continents for some reason. I think he's working on it. I can't pinpoint what exactly it is about his skating overall that I think has gotten a little better, but it still needs improvement. Uh, I I kind of can't take the choreography seriously. He's trying to sell it. I think that's what it is. He's trying to sell his choreography more, but it's still not good choreography, and the transitions aren't all there. Also should work on his spins, so... We can be impressed by Boyang Jin because he lands all those quads, but there is another aspect of skating, which is the uh, program component marks, and he really needs to grow and develop in that aspect of his skating. I really hope that he goes home after the season and just kind of like trains, um, kind of like his basic skating skills, like extending the line, having more stretch. He's a tad gangly too with his movements, but overall I'd say I don't want to be picky. 
this was impressive that he was able to land as many quads as he did and stay on his feet. And he should be proud of the silver medal. So go Team China. <laughs> now, another uh, skater from China who won the bronze medal here is Han Yan. And I got to say, Han Yan, I think, is one of my favorite international male skaters. I... I'm very impressed by both of his programs this year. And I remember seeing him a few years ago and not really being that impressed by his style of skating. And he wasn't always the most consistent. But he seems to be getting his jumps under him better. And I think he's growing artistically. I And his programs are fun. So the short program is fun. You know, it shows off his personality. And then the, his long program, he really gets to emote more than I've ever seen him do in the past. And it's great. Um, you know, had some issues on the jumps. One jump on each of the program, I can't remember which one. But overall, very consistent. Landed two quads in the long program, two quad toes and two triple axles. So he's got the technical stuff down. And I think what it's going to take for him to move up in the standings is just keep being consistent maybe add in a quad style so we can so he can have three quads in the low long program to compete with yuzuru and javier that's something to think about but yeah hanyan he's uh definitely one of my favorites that long program of his i think is so beautiful uh beautiful and cheesy yes i understand that there's spoken lyrics towards the end i actually don't mind it surprisingly but i can watch that over and over again. That would have to be my my favorite part of the men's long program. Even though Patrick's long program is just as special. I don't know, there's something um, personal that I can connect with Han Yan's long program a little more. So kudos to him. Very great job. And even though his program component marks are below Patrick Chan's, they're also kind of nicely above Boyang Jin. So Boyang Jin received an 80 for PCS and uh, Han Yan received 85. So much better than Boyang Jin, much lower than Patrick Chan. Now, let's see, the last person I will discuss will be Shoma Uno from Japan. Off the podium here at Four Continents, uh, which is a little surprising to me. I thought he would have performed a little better, had some troubles with his quads in both the short and the long program. Um, a funny remark I wanted to, ma wanted to make was that the second quad toe in his long program, he actually like got down on his knees, so it wasn't exactly a fall, but it was very graceful. It almost looked intentional in a way. It totally wasn't, but it's kind of that Sasha Cohen thing where it's like, even if you fall, you look beautiful. So Shoma Ono, that just shows how much of a beautiful skater he is. Um, also had an issue on his quad toe in the beginning of the long program as well, but beautiful skater. I love both of his programs. Up and coming, you know, skating star for Japan. Super tiny. I love his low landings and like how he can stretch out his leg forever um, outside of his jumps. They are so amazing. He's just so cute. I love the upbeat short program, and the long program is just as good as well. Um, uh, I did think he was a contender for World for the podium. I think he has an outside shot because he still needs to work on his consistency. And don't get me wrong, he's a very good skater, very technically sound, but you can't really afford these little errors here and there throughout both programs to be able to make it on the podium against Yuzuru Hanyu and Javier Fernandez and Dennis Ten if he's, you know, skating well too. But I'm a fan of Shoma and I thought it was a really good event. Uh, unfortunate for the American guys, Max Aaron and Grant Hotchstein not being able to step it up, but hopefully they will feed off of the home crowd in Boston and perform better there. So that is my video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you all later. Bye-bye.